Welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. Today our topic is the Rift Valley Bibliography, an introduction, and Andrew Harvey will start us off. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you, Richard, who um, it should be noted has led most of this bibliography project, especially on the online and software interface side of things. So together with Richard and Jeremy, I'm going to provide an introduction to the Rift Valley bibliography, uh, basically an early version of a tool that we hope will serve all researchers working in the area and specifically members of the Rift Valley network. Uh, the talk will begin by giving a brief bit of context about the linguistics, uh, about the linguists behind the bibliography, followed by a note on how to access the recording of this talk. I'll then provide an overview of the bibliography as well as a note on its purposes. Uh, and then my portion of the talk will end with a general walkthrough of how to access different parts of the bibliography from the Rift Valley Network's website. Richard will then go into some detail on the bibliography formats, uh, prospects for future versions, uh, accessing the collection of associated PDF files, as well as how you can make contributions to the bibliography. Uh, we'll then end with questions and remarks. So for a bit of context, I'm Andrew Harvey. I'm an early career researcher based at the Tokyo University of Foreign Studies. I began working in the Rift Valley area in 2012, conducting field work uh, with Gorwa. And uh, I've recently expanded to work with the Bantu language Ihanzu, and the title of my current funded work is an initial description of Ihanzu, a Bantu language of the Tanzanian Rift Valley area. Um, upon completion of this project later this year, I'll begin conducting fieldwork with Hadza in a two-year ELDP funded project, which, ta which takes in all three of these languages titled Gorwa, Hadza, and Ihanzu, Grammatical Inquiries in the Tanzanian Rift. Um, Richard Griscom has been working in the Rift Valley area since around 2015 with a specific focus on the Azamjeg variety of Datoga, uh, documenting and describing the language through the ELDP funded project documentation of Azamjeg Datoga. And Richard will be joining me in working with Hadza this fall in a new ELDP funded project titled Documenting Hadza, Contact and Variation. Uh, Jeremy uh, Coburn is a doctoral student based at the University of Indiana Bloomington who began working with Hadza in around 2017 uh, and Jeremy plans to focus on the description of Hadza for his doctoral dissertation. Um, so basically shortly after this presentation uh, a recording of this talk will uh, be made available at the DOI uh, you can see on your screen and uh, as always, the recording can be watched uh, at any time on the Rift Valley Network's YouTube channel at the uh, link below. Um, so to begin, the uh, Rift Valley bibliography is available on the Rift Valley Network's website, and a special thanks to Ancrete and uh, Alice Mitchell for uh, putting that up there for us. Um, and uh, there are several formats available uh, in which to access and use the bibliography. Perhaps the easiest is as a text document. So similar to the image on the right, this provides an alphabetized list of works on the languages of the Tanzanian Rift. Uh, this information is also available as a .ris or a .bibtex uh, file. And uh, these files can be used uh, to upload to a reference uh, management software of your choice, such as Zotero or Mendeley or any other one that you uh, happen to be using or like. Um, the bibliography is also available as a Zotero group or collection, which Richard will discuss in more detail in a moment. Um, additionally, some of the works listed in the bibliography are available as downloadable PDF files but note that these PDF files are password protected and due to fair use limitations, they're only accessible to Rift Valley Network members. Um, so currently, the bibliography contains around 400 entries uh, in its first version, and of these, around 165 associated PDFs are available for members to download. Uh, material 
is principally focused on uh, the languages and linguistics of the rift. Uh, other works such as those with an ethnographic focus will probably be added in later versions or later releases. Uh, in the Zotero group, material has uh, been tagged according to the language or languages it treats, as well as uh, if the associated PDF file is available for download. Again, this tag convention can be further employed and further refined in the later releases. Uh, so to present, uh, the bibliography has been designed with sort of three major purposes in mind. And the, and the most basic of that is to serve as a practical and easy to use repository for references as well as literature. So having consistent references, which are easy to incorporate into text documents, should take some of the effort out of writing and record keeping. Um, a further core purpose is academic. So with a rich list of key references and a growing bank of literature, it's hoped that academic outputs on the Rift Valley area can be solidly contextualized within the conversations of previous scholarship. Uh, and making this material openly accessible to network members should also serve to lower barriers for those with limited access to journals and university libraries. Um, and a further core purpose exists in sort of building and strengthening our network. So surely we as a network are more coherent and effective when we can see, access, and engage with our common research history. And this provides us with a similar starting point for future work. It also, in some sense, is a first step in understanding how each of these threads of research fit together, which works talk to each other, how have ideas developed, who is at the center and who is at the periphery of the conversations we have. So these are some of the central purposes of having um, a Rift Valley bibliography. Uh, turning to the homepage of the Rift Valley Network, I would like to give some basic detail on how to access the bibliography in its different formats. So if you visit the uh, website, the, the landing page of our Rift Valley Network website, which is uh, accessible at the uh, URL listed uh, just below the title there, uh, you will, uh, to access the relevant page with the bibliography from here, you uh, click on the More tab in the menu bar that's now highlighted in red here, um, and a bibliography option will appear. And by clicking on it, so once you click on it, you will be brought here, which is the bibliography page. Alternatively, one can simply enter or bookmark to the URL, again, given here the URL of the bibliography page, uh, which is just given below the title of this slide. Um, and once on the bibliography page, so here it's been expanded, um, all the links to the various parts and formats of the bibliography can be found here. So to access the bibliography in a text document format, you click on the link that's highlighted here in red. This will, uh, the resulting document will look something like this. Um, and for a file which uh, can be downloaded to Zotero or Mendeley or the reference management software program of your choice, you would choose the .ris or the .bibtex link, which is highlighted here in red. Uh, and the Zotero group or the Zotero collection can be accessed by clicking the highlighted link here. Uh, this is a dynamic linked format and will be explained in more detail by Richard. Um, .pdf files can be accessed by clicking the link highlighted in red here. And it should be noted once again that due to fair usage restriction, these uh, PDF files are password protected and the password can only be made, made available to uh, Rift Valley Network members. And again, Richard will provide more details on this shortly. Um, all questions uh, about the bibliography or about materials on the bibliography requests for uh, clarification or takedown notices, all that, they can be directed to the Rift Valley Network's email, which uh, is highlighted here. Uh, and that basically ends my brief introduction to the bibliography, but before finishing, however, it should be noted the majority of the references currently available uh, in our bibliography are from those that are found in uh, Rift Valley Network member uh, Harold Hammerstrom's Glottolog, which is uh, cited here 
as well as Rift Valley Network member Bonnie Sands' 2002 bibliography with Uni Philip Maho. Um, and of course, with your help, uh, with, with members' help, it is hoped that our more specialized bibliography will grow past these starting points, but it is important to recognize these prior contributions. And uh, so now I will uh, give the floor to Richard. Thank you, Andrew. I will now just give me a second. I will swap our screens. Okay, so Andrew, can you you can see my screen now? I can see your screen now. Okay, great. So um, what we're looking at now is just a, a live version of the website that Andrew was just referring to. So this is the Rift Valley Bibliography uh, website page, which is on the, the website for the Rift Valley Network. Um, and as Andrew said, uh, there are a few different formats of the bibliography that, that are made accessible through this page. The first of these is the text document. Uh, the text document, uh, you could just uh, click on this link and it will take you to a Dropbox page. That will bring you to uh, a page like this one that you see here, which is uh, hosted by Dropbox, which is a cloud storage platform. That's where we're hosting all of the files online. Um, here you see there are a few different options. Uh, you can sign in if you have a Dropbox account and you can then, um, you can create a copy of this file on your own Dropbox account. You can also just browse the file here through this uh, preview. And then you can also download the file on the right. You can download that to your, your hard drive on your computer. Uh, so this is probably the most basic and accessible format of the bibliography. Uh, but we have other formats that are designed for users who might want to use uh, reference managers uh, such as Zotero or Mendeley or EndNote, um, and also others who might want to even contribute to the bibliography. So if we go back to the bibliography page, uh, I'll just show very briefly what it looks like to download uh, or utilize one of these other formats. So when you click on one of these links, it will take you to this preview portal in Dropbox. And here it gives you the direct download link. If you try to download uh, the file directly using this link, uh, then it will, uh, it will not download the file correctly and you will not be able to use it. So you can then download the file here. You can uh, direct download uh, to your computer and then save that file. So I'll just do the same thing here. So I will import that RIS file that I just downloaded from Dropbox into Zotero. And there's a few options here uh, just for if there are any linked files with the formats that we're providing. There are no linked files with the .RIS and .bibtext formats. Uh, so this option doesn't actually change anything. Uh, and then this top option is just for importing collections uh, into what's called a a new sub collection, which essentially makes a new folder for that collection. So just to kind of recap um, what I just did here, I navigated to the bibliography website page. I clicked on the link for the .ris uh, format of the bibliography, which then took me to a Dropbox portal, where then I could directly download the file. After I downloaded that file, then I opened the Zotero Reference Manager application, and I then imported that file, uh, which uh, you can see here, is then directly importing all of the uh, entries of the bibliography. So this is very useful for anyone who is interested in using a reference manager or who has experience using a reference manager, because this get, gives you instant access to the entire bibliography altogether, so you don't have to manually enter any of this information. Uh, you don't have to just choose some of the entries, but you can rather get all of them. Uh, also, when you import the bibliography in this way, it will include the tags that Andrew had mentioned. So you can see on the, the left side of Zotero here, even as it's continuing to import, it already has all of the tags available here on the left. What these tags do is they enable you to uh, ca uh, categorize different entries in the bibliography based on the, any uh, languages that each entry might be uh, uh, relevant for. So for example, if there's a 
a entry in the bibliography that describes Alagua grammar, then it will have the Alagua tag, but it will also have the uh, South Cushitic tab. Uh, whereas if there's a bibliography entry that uh, describes Rangi, uh, then that will have the Rangi tag, but then also the Bantu tag. And we also have Hadza and Sandawe and the Toga tags. There's one tag that is not a language tag, but a rather sort of a, a meta tag, and that is this PDF available tag. So this tag, all it does is it categorizes those entries in the bibliography for which we have a PDF available um, on the uh, Dropbox cloud storage. Uh, so you can see now that um, Zotero has successfully imported all of the entries uh, of the bibliography from that .ris file that I downloaded from the Dropbox uh, portal. So if I click uh, PDF available, uh, you will see that uh, it lists um, all of the entries of the bibliography for which we have PDFs. Now the PDFs are not linked uh, to these files. So if you download the .ris file or you download the .bibtex file, and then you import the entries into your reference manager application. Uh, those entries will not be linked to the PDF file. So you have to do that linking uh, manually if you are going to use these formats. Uh, the, there is no significant difference between the .ras format and the .bibtex format. Uh, we're providing both formats just because certain applications uh, they have certain restrictions on the kind of formats that they can use for importing data. So we're just providing both of those so that should be accessible to users who are using a wide variety of different applications. Okay, now we will return to the bibliography page and I will now discuss the, uh, the third format, which is the Zotero group. So if we click on the Zotero group link from the bibliography website page, uh, if you don't have an account already, it will first just take you to a registration page for Zotero. If you don't have an account, it's, uh, it's free. Uh, so you can uh, create an account if you want to use the Zotero group. You don't need to create an account if you want to use the other formats. But if you would like to use the Zotero group uh, format, then you, you need to make an account online. And that's... Um, also true, even if you have already downloaded the Zotero application, uh, you need to ha actually create an account that's registered with Zotero in order to get access to the group. So I've already made an account, so I will go ahead and log in. And when you log in or register, then it will take you to the, uh, the online library of the Zotero group. So here you can see that uh, the bibliography is represented here online. It has a basic uh, search interface. You can search for entries in the search box here. You can also click on the tags and you can see that it uh, updates the list of entries on the right uh, automatically. And you can also combine tags. So these are all of the Mbukwe files that we have PDFs for. Uh, so this is a, a web portal through which you can access the, uh, the Rift Valley bibliography online. You can also uh, contribute to the bibliography using this interface, and I'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Um, but probably the, the most ideal way to access this uh, the Zotero group is actually through the Zotero application. So if we return to the Zotero application here, can see that I've got a essentially a second copy or, ver or version of the Rift Valley bibliography down here uh, below my own uh, private library, which is, consists of the entries that are hosted on my own computer. Here under the group libraries heading, you can see that I am synced or connected to the Rift Valley bibliography collection of the Zotero group. So that means that all of the entries in this bibliography are automatically synced with those that are hosted by Zotero online. Uh, so there are, um, there are then two ways that you can access the Zotero group, either through the web portal or through the Zotero application. 
So if you add an entry to the, to the bibliography here through your application, it will then show up through in the web portal. If you add an entry in the web portal, it will then also show up in the application. And uh, what's, really, uh, what's really nice about this Zotero group and this library is that anyone can contribute to the bibliography and it, those entries that you add will instantly be added to, uh, to everyone's synced accounts. Uh, so if I add an item here, I'm just going to create something called test book. If I add that here, it shows up in my list of entries. Uh, then it will also show up here on this website uh, for, the, um, for the library of the Zotero group. So uh, this format of the bibliography is ideally designed for those who specifically use Zotero because again, it's uh, most accessible here through the Zotero application, but also for those who want to contribute to the bibliography. Um, there's also one distinct advantage of this format, specifically if you're using uh, the Zotero application. And that is that uh, this format does allow for linking of online resources. So you can see that um, some of these entries have a, a small triangle next to them. What that indicates is that there is a linked online resource. Uh, so I've gone through and manually uh, linked all of the entries for which we have PDFs uh, to those individual PDF files uh, on the PDF storage. And then you can access those uh, via the Zotero application. So if we click on the PDF available tag, we'll see that all of these entries have PDFs. And if I click on any individual one, if I either double click on it or uh, right click and choose view online, then it will show up in my web browser and then I can then browse that resource and I can even download it if I wanted to. Okay, so that's one of the uh, primary advantages of using the Zotero group, uh, especially if, if you're using the Zotero application and then you uh, sync your account so that you have instant access to the bibliography. Um, now I've already referred to the PDF collection, but I want to describe now the method uh, that you might use to access the PDF collection even if you aren't uh, a member of the Zotero group, if you don't use a reference manager at all, just how do you get access to those PDFs? And access uh, is made available, again, through the bibliography website page. So we move on to this next section, you see it says PDF collection. There's a link here where it says collection of PDFs. If you click this, it will then take you again to a Dropbox portal. And here it asks for a password. So as Andrew said, this uh, collection of PDFs is password protected. And the reason for that is that um, it, it restricts access to the collection to only those who are members of the Rift Valley Network. And that's so that uh, our use of these resources is covered under fair use so that we aren't violating copyright law. So it's very important that we uh, keep access to these files only among the uh, members of the Rift Valley Network. And there are two ways that you can, uh, you can use this interface. You can uh, browse and download individual files. So if you click on a file, you can then uh, preview it. So this is the same file actually that I accessed uh, via the Zotero application directly. Uh, you can also download all of the files together uh, as, a, uh, as a zip file. So if you click download and then direct download, uh, it will package everything together as one large zip file. So you can actually get all of the PDFs of the entire collection together. So again, there are two different ways that you can use this. You can download or preview individual files, or you can actually download the entire collection together. Uh, there's one final note that I want to make about the PDF collection. And that is that if any Rift Valley uh, network members uh, do not want any of their materials to be distributed uh, through this method, uh, then uh, please uh, let the editors of the bibliography know. Again, you can send an email to the Rift Valley network email address, which is listed on the bibliography website page. 
Um, and please let us know um, as soon as possible if you would not like uh, any of your publications to be made available, then we will take those down. Okay, and finally, I just want to touch briefly on this uh, notion of future releases and then also uh, how members of the Rift Valley Network can make their own contributions to the bibliography so that it can continue to grow. So the release notes uh, currently are very minimal. They are available on the, uh, the Rift Valley Bibliography website page here under the section release notes. There's a link here, if you click that, will take you to a Dropbox preview page. And you can see there's just a small amount of text here describing the current status of the bibliography. So this document will be updated um, as we continue to make uh, new releases. For those who are using the Zotero group, um, you will get instant updates. So if anyone adds an entry to the bibliography, you have instant access to that entry. Uh, for those who aren't using the Zotero group, we will make periodic uh, releases of the bibliography. So we will make uh, updates of the bibliography. So that includes the uh, text document format as well as the uh, .ris and .bibtex files. So we will update those um, so that those who are using other reference, manager, uh, reference management uh, applications um, than Zotero or those who just want to use the text document, they will have access to those updates that the uh, contributors are making. Uh, we don't plan to have more releases than perhaps four per year, so they will be periodic. Um, uh, having said that, uh, all of the links that are currently present on the bibliography website page, uh, they will be maintained. So we won't be changing the links for each release, but rather these links uh, will be consistent and we will just be uh, updating the release notes uh, to indicate that a new version has, uh, has been created and we will send out announcements on the Rift Valley Network newsletter, um, uh, just uh, sharing information about new releases, including uh, new content or changes to uh, content that had already been added. Uh, so those releases again will be, uh, will be made on a periodic basis. Okay, finally, we'd like to invite members of the Rift Valley Network to contribute to the bibliography. So currently, it's been a, a small group of uh, three of us who have been primarily contributing to the bibliography. Um, but if anyone would like to either uh, create uh, new entries in the bibliography or share PDF files that they have, uh, we would like to welcome and encourage that. And there are two primary ways that I would like to encourage members of the network to contribute. Uh, the first and simplest way is just to send an email to the RVN uh, email address. Uh, so that way, um, the editors of the bibliography will receive that email and you can either include um, a citation in that email, just in the, the uh, body of your, your email, just in a basic text format, or you can also attach a file. Uh, you can also attach a PDF file and then we will have access to that and we can add that to the PDF collection. Uh, the other way that members of the network can contribute to the Zotero group, or sorry, can contribute to the bibliography is you can join the Zotero group. So again, that is uh, free. You just uh, register with Zotero and then you have access to the library of the, the Zotero group and you can add entries directly through the web portal or you can add them via the Zotero application. If you want to add entries through the web portal, then you use this green plus sign here and it will just take you through a series of menus. So you just choose the item type first here. So say we're adding a book and then it will ask for uh, various types of information for that entry. So again, we could have test book number two here. Oh, apparently I have my IPA on. Test book number two, and you can enter out, uh, you can enter author information, um, place of publication, publisher, date, uh, all of those things. Um, and then when you click save, then it will add that entry to the bibliography. 
Uh, currently, the arrangement of the bibliography in terms of subcollections is that we have uh, different version subcollections. So if anyone would like to add entries right now, you could add entries to this Rift Valley Bibliography version 1.01, which currently is empty, but is kind of the space uh, that is uh, currently made available for anyone who would like to, to add entries to the bibliography. Now, again, you can also uh, contribute uh, by using a, a synced library via the uh, Zotero application. So you just use the same green plus, and then you choose your item type, and then you enter in that information, just like you would um, on the website, and then it will be immediately added. But again, um, we'd prefer for now if you add that to the uh, version 1.01. Uh, so that we can distinguish uh, new entries from older entries. You can also add tags to your new entries um, if you already know uh, which tags might be relevant, and you can add those as well. Uh, but the editors of the bibliography will be uh, vetting any contributions that are made to make sure that they correspond to uh, the standards that we've developed for the bibliography and to make sure that we avoid any uh, duplication of entries. Um, that concludes our presentation for today. So thank you again, everyone, for participating in today's presentation. If you do have any further questions about the bibliography, you can uh, send an email to the Rift Valley Network uh, email address, which is listed here on the uh, Rift Valley Bibliography page. And um, yeah, also, if you would like to contribute to the bibliography, uh, you can send us an email or you can go ahead and join the Zotero group. Uh, it's an open group. You simply need to register on Zotero and then join as a member and then you can start making entries uh, right away. Uh, so yeah, thank you and uh, we'll see you at our next webinar.